Joining me now is the historian and writer Max Hastings, the former political editor of The Sun, Trevor Kavanagh, the journalist and filmmaker Billy J.D. Porter, and the Labour MP Kate Howey. A warm welcome to all of you. Thanks for coming in. Kate, if I start with you, does this seem to you, does it feel to you now like a leap forward or a yearning for the past? What is behind this move? Oh, no, it's very much looking forward and very confident. I feel, I feel this is going to really wake the United Kingdom up to being able to look at new ideas, to do things differently, to get that sort of back barrier of the straitjacket of the EU, which was always hung over us. And I think one of the things that will really happen is that people with new ideas and you know, interesting things will be able to, ex to express that much more. And the civil service, which I think has been kind of straitjacked and kind of mm. complacent over the fact that the EU has been there all the time. I think that is going to really wake up and I think British politics will actually change because we will now know that when we vote for a party and they say they're going to do something, we can't blame anybody else if they don't do it. Max Kate speaks with a real voice of freedom, a sort of breath of fresh air there. I couldn't disagree more strongly. I've never seen anything as grotesque as a celebration over what's going to be a very expensive divorce. To me, one of the great tragedies of what's going on is that those who wanted Brexit talk as if Brexit was a policy that was going to do things for Britain. Well, in fact, if you look at all the major problems facing Britain, um, the huge trade deficit, education system, funding the NHS, funding the welfare system, how to make Britain pay its way in the 21st century, getting out of Europe is going to do absolutely nothing to advance these things. It may well push them backwards. And to me, I mean, one thing I fear some of us found this a very divisive issue at the time of the referendum. I think things are getting worse because those who are triumphalist today about leaving, to some of us, this is such a hideously backward vision of Britain. This is, they want to Miss Marple Britain, which I'm old enough to remember what it was like. And Britain today is a much more successful country than it was in the 1950s. How but you, Kate, I think, have voted to go back to the 1950s. That's absolute How nonsense. And I mean, I think that's the kind of negativity that's coming over from a lot of people you a know, lot of in, in, in the media. No, I don't think so. I think the public, Most of the business the public community today think this now is madness. and business today will know this is happening. They want to get on with it. They can see that outside the EU, 187 countries are not in the EU. They manage very well. You know, I feel really positive and confident. And I think that what we want to see now is everybody being able to work to give their own ideas of how this can move us forward. And it is it is very sad that so many people but still want to be negative. What is Brexit going to do, Kate, to advance the issue, as I mentioned? About well, let me bring in Billy, because yes. one of the things that we've had, you talked about an old a sort of Miss Marple Britain, and, you know, if we're recognising there was a generational gap, wasn't there, in the voting, I don't know how you see this, whether you think you've been saddled with something or... Yeah, well, I mean, th this wasn't the outcome that people my age wanted. Um, we categorically did not want this result. Um, and I think that it's just going to cement this further distrust between young people and people in power here. Um, I think that people my age have a complete lack of faith in politics. Mm. And, and why wouldn't we? We have a prime minister that the public didn't vote for, who's leading a party who have just come out of a huge scandal that basically le delegitimizes the whole campaign that brought them into power. Trevor, that must strike a chord for somebody so close <laughs> to political journalism and the establishment. Well, I think the uh, problem about this sort of view of the way that we now face uh, the future is too dismal by half, as mm. it was indeed during the referendum campaign when we were warned that the world would basically end on June the 23rd if we voted out. Nothing of that sort happened whatsoever. In fact, well, every, every, the in, in sure. fact, every single forecast, every single mm. forecast mm. of gloom and doom mm. proved to be not just wrong, but in some cases uh, the reverse of the case. We, in fact, have done extremely well, and I think that that is likely to be the case in the coming months and years. It's not going to be easy. I think that the European Union, especially France, is going to make life mm. extremely difficult for us at times. But I think in three, four, five years' time, we'll look back and think, uh, with huge relief that we've taken this, this de de decision. Brexiteers um, say this is about being more open, more worldly, more outward-looking, yet you talk to foreigners in this country since the Brexit vote who say they have felt increased xenophobia. How do you reconcile those two outlooks, Kate? 
Well, I, I want very much the decision taken that the, our EU citizens here and British citizens in, in the EU will be able to remain and, and carry on as but they've been doing. But not just in policy, but in tone, course. in no, culture and acceptance. Well, I, I, I think, you see, all of those things could have happened if we'd find some of the other EU countries not wanting to engage in that debate. I mean, the, the, to be fair, the Prime Minister tried to get this some time ago, an agreement. And, and um, I, I do think that once that is settled, I think that will make a, a huge difference to how people feel, because there's a lot of fear being put around when, after all, it's going to be two years before we actually leave, and somehow the way that the media Max, has maybe put that's it right. has been maybe the fear very, game is still being played. Now that we are where we are, we have to hope for the best. Mm. But it's no good. When one says the worst does not happen, we've had a 13% devaluation. Was that good news? The yes, fact that the pound news. is worth... No. So can I, can I just it's just regarded just to, as very good news. Just to... Um, Come on in. Just yeah, to it. respond to what you're actually asking for, I think that the nitty-gritty of the numbers, no one seems to know what the answer is. We're being bombarded with all of these different numbers. No one seems to know what's going to happen. Mm. But if you are talking about tone and the way that British people now feel and the way that other people feel about Britain... I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm ashamed. And, you know, as when we're children, we're taught about the spirit of inclusion and, and the strength of teamwork. And you and think that's gone, gone with that? the Brexit I think it's vote. gone with the most powerful people, political leaders all over the world right now. It's a Trevor. I think that you're expressing a personal point of view. You may be expressing the view of quite a few young people, but I don't think it's a majority no. view at all. Hugely I think there's a much more optimistic well, it was about, 75 about, the Union, young about leaving the European Union. And well, you, have to take you, into you, account do, you have to take that into account, though, don't you? I mean, we'll all of be dead much more quickly than but Billy and her generation will, and then they're saddled with something they didn't want. But this is, the, the point is that there are other things to be considered as well. It's not just Britain wanting to leave the European Union. An awful lot of people across the European Union, in countries that you'd yep. be surprised by, are even more strongly anti the European Union than we were before the vote. Yes. And even the Pope, or the Pope of all people, in oh. Rome of all places, oh. was saying only on the birthday, the 60th birthday of the European Union this weekend, that the European Union is dying. Now, this is not just scare tactics or fear campaigns. This is, uh, this is the mood that is, in fact, prevailing right across the European I, Union. I would totally agree. Where I don't agree, although Michael Heseltine is a very old friend of mine, where I don't agree with Michael, is Michael will not accept that the European project has gone horribly wrong, which I would, I would agree yeah. with you. It has gone horribly wrong. But, on the, other hand, wrong. but on the other hand, um, to some of us, the benefits, both the the, 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 the cultural importance of being part of Europe and also the huge economic advantage... Let me ask you something very, very honest, very personal. Mm. Would you prefer now the European project to wither away and die? I mean, that will give us a sense that we've made the right choice, right? Well, it will. For us now, for mm -hmm. Britain, yes, if Europe, if Europe goes down in a short term, it's going to give people satisfaction. But my, my no, oldest hero among true. historians, Michael Howard, who is now 94, not the, I mean, the good Michael Howard, not the politician... Uh, that Michael Howard was saying the other week over um, the referendum, he said, the great lesson of my long lifetime has been that most difficult problems are best addressed together with partners mm. and allies, however difficult. And mm. that is how some of us feel. And this is why some of us, the idea of people celebrating only damn fools like Boris Johnson or David Davis are going but to Max, celebrate. I, Max, I must say, I saw no uh, triumphalism in the House of Commons today. I thought it was we, a very, mm. very calm and sensible uh, reaction to Theresa May's statement. Thank you all very much. We have important work to do, as you know. <laughs>